Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name is Nick and this is our first run review of the Salomon S-Lab Spectre. So the S-Lab Spectre is an interesting shoe from Salomon. It is a super shoe designed for the masses. So Salomon says that most super shoes are designed for elites running very fast marathons, chasing world records, and actually they don't work that well for people running things like four hour marathons or 45 minute 10Ks. And the Spectre is a shoe aimed at that crowd. It's like I say, a super shoe for the masses with a ride that will suit those people better than standard super shoes. So it sits below the Salomon S-Lab Phantasm 2 in the range of super shoes they have. That is the full carbon super shoe within the Salomon range. And it shouldn't be confused with the Salomon Spectre. S-Lab is the key part of the name. It's a lot more expensive than the standard Spectre. I don't know why Salomon makes things so needlessly confusing with its naming structure, but yeah, this is the S-Lab Spectre. So it's priced like a super shoe, that's for sure. It costs £210 in the UK, $220 in the US, so it's only a little bit cheaper than most carbon, full carbon super shoes aimed at just being very speedy. It weighs in at 254 grams or 9 ounces in my UK size 9, and it has a stack height of 38mm at the heel and 30mm at the forefoot for an 8mm drop. Key feature on the Spectre is its dual density midsole, with the top layer being Salomon's Best Foam, it's, it's Energy Foam plus Piba Foam that you find on shoes like the Phantasm. Then you've got the Energy Foam underneath, which is a blend of EVA and Olefin that Salomon has used in some of its top carbon shoes before, but it's a firmer, less springy and lightweight foam than the Piba Foam on the top layer of the midsole there. You've got the brand's R Camber Rocker design with the Energy Blade carbon plate running through the shoe. With the, uh, with the Spectre, the Energy Blade plate is winged at the back to create a bit more stability, and there's a lot of going on for stability at the back of the shoe. You've got quite a wide base at the back there, the way it flares, the two different sides of the shoe there. And you've got side walls of foam at the back of the shoe here as well, and this high collar as well, which will add to a feeling of stability at the back of the shoe in line with the idea that people running at slower speeds are more often heel strikers than those running at faster speeds. And with all of this kind of adding up the idea that uh, the shoe will support you landing at the heel and then roll you through quickly onto your forefoot. Okay, the upper has got quite a lot of padding around the tongue and collar of the shoe and this extended heel tab at the back here, which I'm not a huge fan of. You've got a more breathable uh, upper at the front there, but you've got lots of padding at the back to give a bit more comfort than you get from most uh, super shoes which are very thin lightweight uppers and you've got a contour grip rubber outsole with pretty good coverage here along the forefoot two strips of rubber at the back you've got a bit of a cutout to reduce weight and it's kind of sculpted around here so really anything that's going to come into contact with the ground does have a bit of rubber contact on there to increase the durability of the shoe and, it, and hopefully improve its grip as well comes the fit of the shoe it fit me well in my normal uk running shoe size which is a uk 9 with salomon that's a us 9.5 that's usually about where i am in us sizes 9.5 or 10 it's got a nice close fit around the front of the shoe but without being at all constrictive so it's it's roomy enough while still having a racy feeling got a good hold around the heel and midfoot i haven't loved this extended heel tab though on my first run today i did notice a little bit of uh, irritation around the back of my achilles uh, i just don't like it. it just sticks up too much and i, I don't know why it's there um, so i'm not a huge fan of that but overall i'd say the shoe fit well in my normal running shoe size i would stick with that I just don't like the heel very much. The fit for me in the S Lab Spectre uh, is fine. Uh, I'm a size 8 in the UK. This is a size 8. I didn't have any issues with it at all. I had plenty of space in the forefoot uh, and around the side of the front of the foot. Um, and I found that it was quite easy to get a nice lockdown fit in. It's quite a padded shoe uh, for what is effectively a race shoe. Um, it's probably one of the more comfortable race shoes. I know it's not designed uh, in the same way that elite shoes are. Uh, but it's definitely um, a comfortable shoe. Didn't have any issues with it. I would stay to my size in it. So I've actually done two runs now in this shoe. One of them was a quite a tasty uh, interval session. So that was a marathon training session, which I did about 14K, which included um, six times six uh, at my uh, um, almost marathon pace, so a little bit faster than my marathon pace. So it was about four minute kilometers that I ran those intervals. And then there was a float uh, recovery in it. So that was uh, three times, uh, six times three minutes at um, 30 seconds slower than my marathon pace. So it's about four 30 minute kilometers um, for that. Um, and it was an all right shoe for that. Um, I think it's actually uh, some of those paces that I was doing is sort of the paces that the shoe is designed for. I know it's a shoe that's made for um, more general runners, not elite athletes. Um, so you're looking for like that four hour marathon time. Um, for that, I think it it's fine. It, it feels comfortable. I definitely didn't have any issues with it. What I would say about the shoe is that it doesn't necessarily feel fast when it's on your feet. Um, it doesn't feel bad either. I definitely didn't have any trouble maintaining that pace in this shoe. It felt very comfortable for doing that. Um, 
but equally it didn't feel like it was really helping me maintain that pace either i think there's a lot of shoes out there that um aren't necessarily put down as being race shoes uh, make a lot of daily super shoes where they i feel a similar vibe to this shoe um but in a lot of instances those shoes do feel like they're actually helping you out a bit it's nothing like the socking endorphin speed four um i get a very similar feel to this shoe um i think the main thing about this is that it has this um the midsole is designed to be a little bit more stable than what you would get from a traditional race shoe so that helps runners that maybe aren't trying to get those really fast times um it does feel like a pretty stable shoe to me uh which but then again a lot of the daily shoes that do a similar thing that have plates in them do also feel pretty stable as well and i think i could use them for the same sort of thing so uh at easier paces for me which is about five minute kilometers uh felt absolutely fine um i definitely wouldn't use it for those paces it just feels a little bit uh clunky um and that doesn't have the sort of softness that i'd want at those paces uh for my style of running when you pick up the pace in it uh the it doesn't have the same feel that you would get from a lot of uh, elite race shoes or, or faster race shoes. It doesn't feel particularly propulsive, doesn't feel particularly bouncy. It does have a little bit of a kick in it. So when you pick up the pace, you can do that. Um, but from that first run, and I did another run as well, actually, which was a 10K at um, my uh, comfortable pace, which is about five minute kilometers. Um, I've, it felt absolutely fine. Solid shoe, definitely nice and stable. There's a nice wide base on it. Um, didn't really feel a lot from the plate. Uh, I know that uh, Salomon talk a little bit about this shoe being specifically designed for the way that um, more general runners would run when they're doing a race, uh, which I think they talk a little bit about the heel, the heel strike. Um, I don't think that's necessarily true. I, I don't, I don't think more general runners are more likely to hit the heel uh, when they're running. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely fine. Um, I think it really comes down to uh, the focus this shoe is. I think it would be better if the shoe was delivered as a daily um, super shoe, uh, something like the Huckamack X, things like that. I think it sits into that world. Um, when you start looking at it as a uh, race shoe, a performance shoe for people that aren't looking for the fastest times, that starts to muddy the water a little bit and you end up paying a lot of money for a shoe that's not necessarily doing something that other shoes aren't doing so um on that first run i would say or first two runs i would say that it was fine it was a solid shoe definitely i didn't dislike the shoe i think it was very comfortable and felt very stable but also i didn't feel like it was particularly doing anything that benefited me and my marathon time at the moment is sub three so i'm not necessarily i wouldn't use this shoe for a marathon because i'd use most of my super shoes um so uh it's not necessarily designed for me but also i was running at the paces that this shoe is designed for and i didn't really see any major benefit from that either so um all right first couple of runs but nothing special so i'm just heading out to do my first run in the salomon s lab specter oh so it's a slightly tricky shoe for me to test i'm not really sure what's the best way to use this because I'm reasonably quick marathoner, my PB is uh, 2.28, so my marathon pace in theory it doesn't line up with what Salomon says the shoe is for, but today my plan is to go out for a pretty relaxed hour and test the shoe at a range of paces, just see how it feels. Like I am a heel strike, I should benefit from this nice roll through that Salomon promises on the shoe, and yeah, it'll just be interesting to see how it feels as something a little bit different in the carbon shoe market. So just back from the run now, a uh, lovely day here, really sunny, so that was a very pleasant part of the run. Uh, the shoe felt pretty good, like it's firmer than I expected, given the kind of makeup of the shoe with the piba foam in the midsole. You notice the heel, the heel's quite large and it's a bit firm under the forefoot, which gives you a little bit of a spring off it, but it's not a particularly bouncy shoe. You can really feel the stability that Salomon has gone for here with the shoe, like the big, wide base, the sidewalls of foam. It all feels very supportive and structured, but it doesn't feel particularly racy. Like I was running at a pretty relaxed pace throughout the run, picked up the pace a little bit during one and a half K or so, and it felt a bit better actually when I was running a bit faster, you know, which is faster than the pace they say this shoe is for, but about probably the effort or the motion that I would be doing when I was running fast myself. I think it does feel better when you are running fast, you know, moving your legs in a bit more purpose, like whatever that speed actually is, I think it feels better at that pace. It rolled for a bit more smoothly, but yeah, it was okay. It didn't really feel that lively underfoot or anything like that. And I didn't necessarily come away from that thinking this is a, a super shoe of any kind for any level, really. It felt just quite solid, like a good solid training shoe, but maybe in some future runs, I'll push it to some my fast paces. I'll be running with a bit more purpose and I'll see how that feels then 
with it. It does certainly feel more like the super trainery end of things. And, you know, it's got a big price tag, this, and it didn't feel all that explosive or anything like that underfoot. So you can see what they've gone for. And the stability elements probably work in the sense that, you know, that would be good for people who find super shoes a bit unsupportive, but really bring a lot to the run uh, in the way that obviously uh, true super shoes or even the best super trainers do. So my early verdict on the uh, S Lab Spectre is that it is a tricky shoe because I'm not sure that the aim of the shoe really is required uh, at the moment. Um, if you're paying this much money for a shoe that is designed for running at slower paces, for marathon distance, half marathon distance, that sort of thing, um, there are lots of other shoes that can do that. Um, and they're significantly cheaper than this shoe. So it's a tricky shoe to pinpoint. I think if it was priced cheaper uh, and it was penned as a shoe like the Sockney Dolphin Speed 4, something like that, which is a daily training shoe, which you obviously can use for marathons and, 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 and half marathons and other races, then I think it would be more interesting as a shoe, more likely that people would pick this up. Um, I definitely think for me in my rotation, I would use this as a training shoe. Um, probably uh, for marathon training, things like that, where I want a little bit of extra stability in the running that I'm doing. There are plenty of super shoes which aren't necessarily designed in the same way as the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly that have a bit more stability in them. Things like the Sockney Endorphin Pro 4 and the Pro 3. I think um, they're probably going to do the same sort of thing as this and they're applicable to lots of runners that aren't necessarily going for sub three marathons. Um, but also they do have a bit more performance benefits to it as well. I'd definitely say if you were going to do a marathon and you were aiming for a four hour or four and a half hour marathon time, that those shoes would be absolutely fine. And if you wanted to pick up the pace, those shoes can do it. To have a shoe that is specifically based on doing those sorts of times doesn't give you a lot of flexibility with the shoe either. So if you do want to start picking up the pace and um, you're, you're going for faster times and you, you won't be able to use this shoe anymore, which seems a bit of a strange uh, way to market a shoe. But um, I think it is a solid, comfortable shoe. I don't think you'd have any problems if you had this shoe. I just think it's uh, a fairly specific purpose and um, I haven't quite worked out for me what I would use that for. But having said that, I'm a runner that runs at sub three marathon pace. So maybe uh, it, it's just not designed for me. But at those paces that I did test it at, which are the the paces that the shoe was designed for just didn't quite click with me. Early verdict, uh, that wasn't the first run that really blew me away, but you know, maybe I wasn't really using the Spectre today for the kind of thing I should have been doing. Like, you know, Regardless of the pace you're going at, this is a shoe probably built more for faster runs, so I'll go and do some faster runs at my pace and see how that feels. Just mooching along today, it had a fairly firmish feel, I would say, and it wasn't all that lively underfoot, but you know, had some stability and it did roll through quite nicely. I did up the pace for a short section, so we'll see how that goes in the future. In general, I would say I'm not entirely convinced by the idea of a super shoe uh, for the masses. I don't really accept the idea that elite runners run in one way and other runners run another way. I think people's gates are very individual. Like if I look at the runners running around me in marathons, they will run in very different ways and different to me with my very shuffly style. And I think that's true across the range of paces. So there might be some things that hold true for slow runners that don't hold true for elites. Like maybe you do need a fraction more stability and that kind of thing. But I still think that'll be quite individual. And there are lots of runners at the slower paces who will get a lot from uh, standard super shoes, which you know uh, offer a lighter, bouncier, more dynamic ride. Because this doesn't really have the feel of a super shoe. So if you're going to price it quite expensively, and call it a super shoe for the masses and just basically take away some of the pace and fun and dynamism of a super shoe then you'll be really convincing that you are better for that kind of runner and i just don't think that kind of runner really exists on a grand scale like i say there might be some things that hold true at different paces but overall i think people run in quite different ways at any pace so you have got the extra stability here and i think it'll be a comfortable ride i think it will work quite well actually as a versatile shoe which might be quite interesting as a as a super trainer style shoe but then you have got that very expensive price tag i think it might be of appeal to people who like the Vara Pro from Saucony, which wasn't a shoe I liked myself, but I think has some similar elements to the kind of dual density midsole, big stable design with a plate to try and give you some punch. This is a lot lighter than the Saucony Convara Pro, so if you like that shoe, I think you might get a lot of the same stuff here, but in a lighter design. But probably so far, my impression would be like, if you really want that super shoe feeling, you need to go and get a super shoe, or, and actually if you're looking at the more stable end of things and you want a shoe that will suit slower paces better, I think there are already super shoes that do that quite well. Things like the Endorphin Pro, or actually even the Endorphin Speed as a lightweight super trainer, that's a bit less than this shoe, and I think will achieve a similar effect. So 
while there were some pluses to the ride today, I think it was a solid, stable ride, rolled for okay. I'd like to see a fair bit more from the Spectre as we continue testing ahead of our full review, if I'm going to consider it a shoe that anyone should really race in regardless of pace, and or anyone should really be looking at buying given the high price you have here. But... That's our first look at the Salomon uh, Slab Spectre. Let us know what you think of the shoe below. Do you think this is a good idea, the idea of creating super shoes that work for everyone and are different to normal super shoes? Uh, please do like, subscribe, ring the little bell. All those things help the channel out. And we'll see you next time.